Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. Today we're solving the midterm, midterm of 2021. And the idea here is that we're going to solve it step by step. And this way you're going to have additional feedback to the one you received on your individual midterms. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. A Cardinal cycle is made up of the following processes. From one to two, we have an isothermal and reversible heat addition. From two to three, we have an adiabatic and reversible expansion. From three to four, we have an isothermal and reversible heat rejection. And from four to one, we have an adiabatic and reversible compression. So first thing, before we do anything, know that we're going from one back to one, right? So this is a cycle. That's why it's called a cycle. So we finish on the same place where we started. Um, we are to draw the cycle in a PV diagram noting the number of meter region how differs from the studying class. The cycle operates at a high temperature reservoir of 720 Kelvin and a low temperature reservoir of 300 Kelvin. Okay, so before I actually go ahead and draw that on the PV diagram, let's think about what's happening, okay, before we jump into it like that. We have the we have fluid. They didn't say yet what the fluid is, but we have a fluid. And then we're going from 1 to 2 on an isothermal and reversible heat addition process. Okay, so from when we go from state 1 to state 2, yeah, from state 1 to state 2, we have an isotherm, an isotherm, and we have our heat addition. So we have Q going in, yeah? And if we have Q going in, in that, and it's an isotherm, what's going to happen with this, these guys inside? Right? We're giving energy to them, but we're not allowing the temperature to go up. So we know that this is going to incur an, on an expansion, right? So that means that the energy, I didn't grab the whole thing, the energy that we're giving to the system, excuse me, the energy that we're giving to the system, okay, the Q, right, the heat in the form of heat, it cannot be used, let's do this, it cannot be used to increase the temperature, so therefore the only thing that can change, remember that in a closed system, Q work, right? So in a closed system, because this cannot change in, a, <clears throat> in an ideal gas situation, and we, we're giving energy, then that energy has to go to work. Right? So we know that it's going to expand, and we should expect a higher volume, yeah? So we expect our volume to go up on the second state, and our pressure to go down, right? Because it's pushing up on this guy here, so as it's doing that, it's decreasing its pressure. Know that we have the same amount of molecules inside with a greater volume. So we can think of this as the molecules are not hitting each other as much as they were before because they have more space to move around, right? Likewise, they're not hitting the sides of the uh, container as they were before because they have more space to move around. Cool. Then from two to three, we have an adiabatic and reversible, that is an isentropic expansion. Okay, so if we have an expansion, then obviously our volume is going to increase yet further, but this is, so let me just put expansion here, so expansion, expansion, but we know this is adiabatic, so that means that our Q into the system or out of this guy is nil, right? It's zero. So from the previous state we were in, oops, from the previous state we were in, let me see if I can grab the thing now, we're actually going to go a bit higher, so like so. Okay, so we're going to have even a bit more space than we had before, but without the addition of any heat, right? Cool. So that has that energy for that expansion has to come in as... Okay, so for this to be able to do work for this without this happening, then we need, this is at the expense of the internal energy, right? So we're sure that the internal energy there decreases, and we should expect the temperature to decrease on this third state here from state two. Okay, we also know our volume increased. Okay, and we expect our pressure to have decreased as well because we expanded our volume. Brilliant. Next, three to four. Three to four, isothermal and reversible heat rejection. So now we're taking heat away. So again, we have an isothermal. And this is the Carnot cycle, right? It's a classic ideal cycle. It's always showing up. So we have Q coming away from our system, going out of our system. And if that happens, what will happen with the system here? Remember that the temperature cannot change. So just like before, as we were giving energy, we would expect it to expand because that energy was going to be, we're going to, was going to be used as work to expand. Now it's the other way around. We're taking energy away, so therefore we would expect our volume to decrease. Okay, so I'm going to decrease a bit from where we were before. Okay, so we just decreased a bit the volume. So again, we expect the volume to decrease. Then I would expect my pressure to increase, and I would, and the temperature is the same. Obviously, it's a nice term. Then finally, for the last one, we have adiabatic and reversible isentropic compression. Okay, adiabatic, so no Q, just like before. So it's pretty much the same thing as from two to three, but instead of being expansion, I have a compression here. And again, I don't have any Q going in or out because it's adiab adiabatic. Okay, so just like before, since we have, uh, we're moving, um, we're compressing this thing, so our volume decreases, so I don't have to move anything because I think my piston's already, yeah, it's already lower. So our volume just decreased from four to one, back to one. Our pressure should have increased, and we have, that's happening at the expense of the internal energy, right? Internal energy. 
so it's the internal energy because q is is nil right so whatever happens here whether we're gaining energy or losing energy it's going to be an, at, the, at the expense of the internal energy so in this case here it's compressing so we're gonna have some leftover energy here from the work that means that our internal energy should increase okay so from four to one we should expect an increase in temperature cool so now with that in mind now that we have a clear understanding of what's happening right in this this cycle then we can draw on our pv diagram being certain of the things that we want to find okay i'm going to go ahead and draw my two hyperbolas which are for my or the two temperatures 720 kelvin and the other one is 300 kelvin okay so we're going to be operating between those two guys our first guy is an isothermal and reversible so from one to two Again, we expect our volume to increase, our pressure to decrease, and it has to be all on the same line of the isotherm. So if I can choose any point to start with, that's going to be point one, and I'm going to go down on the p value, right? So down on the x, on the y axis, up on the x axis. So I'm increasing my volume, decreasing my pressure, but remaining on the isotherm, this red line that I drew here, the isotherm. This is going to end somewhere here. Then from two to three, I have an expansion, and I would expect my temperature to decrease, my pressure to decrease, and my volume to increase, okay? So for my pressure to decrease, I need to go downwards. For my temperature to decrease, I need to go to the next isotherm. So I'm going to be somewhere downwards on the y-axis and then further down to the right so that my volume can increase, right? So I can choose any point for the sake of the drawing. So let's just go ahead and choose this one here. And I'm going to go from this point to this point. So that is my isentropic transformation there. Okay, note that, and this is not a straight line, by the way, note that my volume increased, my pressure decreased, and my temperature decreased like we expected. Then we're going from three to four. We're taking energy away from our system in the form of heat. We have to draw the next uh, state on the same isotherm, the same 300 Kelvin, and we would expect our volume to decrease and our pressure to increase. So we need to go that way for the volume to decrease and upwards for my pressure to increase, right? So I can choose any point that I wish as long as it's on this dotted red line and it's to the left and upwards okay so like so and that will be my point of state four this is three down here and then finally i just have to close the cycle and just make sure that whatever i'm doing makes sense with what we saw before so from here to here my volume is decreasing a bit eh, not so much i should probably do let's go back a bit let me put my point state four a bit this way so that we're sure that our volume is decreasing there you go that's a better place okay so from four to one i'm decreasing my volume by a little bit i am increasing my pressure by a significant amount and i'm going from 300 to 700 okay so my volume is decreasing my pressure and temperature are increasing i'm decreasing pressure and temperature increasing like we said it would okay so this is our pv diagram just make sure we're putting the arrows this is our cardinal cycle Cool, that's part A. Next, part B. Find T1, T2, T3, and T4. The cycle employs air as a working fluid. So this is important information. Now we know this is, we can approximate this an ideal gas. Well, B is quite straightforward, right? We know T1 and T2 are on the same, are the same because it's an isotherm and they're on the, on the isotherm of 720 Kelvin. So that's done. Likewise, T3 and T4 are on the isotherm of 300 Kelvin. So that is done. Cool. Moving on. Uh, assume R to be 0.287, Cp to be 1.005, and that these values are constant. This is very good information for us because that allows us to do a lot of things like finding enthalpy by this relationship. We can find internal energy by this relationship, and so on. We can find the difference in entropy from one state to the other by relating Cp, natural log of the temperatures, minus R, the natural log of the pressures. Okay, so this, this opens a lot of possibilities for us to approximate some things. And the CP is independent from the temperature, right? So we know that CP, in reality, we know that CP is a function of temperature as well, but it's saying that in this case, we're considering it's not, so we can consider it a constant value independent from temperature. Uh, behaves like an ideal gas. Great, so all good information here. At the beginning of the isotherm and reversible heat addition process, so the one to two, right? So from one to two, from one to two, the pressure is at a pressure of 7,000 kilopascals. We are to calculate the specific volume of air at state one. Okay, so that's quite straightforward, right? We know PV equals MRT because we just we're just given the information this is an ideal gas, so we can do that. So if I want to find my specific volume, which is just the volume divided by the mass, that will just be the R times T divided by P. We have all that, so that's 0.287 times T 720 
Kelvin divided by my 7,000 that was just given. Unit-wise, we have kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin. This is from the, oops, not CP, the R here, kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin, uh, multiplied by Kelvin from the temperature, and then kilopascals from the pressure. Uh, kilo, kilo, uh, Q, Kelvin, Kelvin, and then joules, which is the same thing as meters cubed times Pascal, we can sort of like this. So we're going to have meters cubed per kilogram, which is the unit for specific volume. So specific volume one ends up being 0 0.02952. And that's meters cubed per kilogram. Cool. That's V1. Uh, D, at the end of the isothermal reversible heat addition process, so again, per one to two, the specific volume of the air has doubled. Okay, so from one to two, my specific volume has up, so two has twice the volume of one. Calculate the specific volume of state two. Okay, so again, very straightforward, right? Specific volume of state two is just two times specific volume of state one, so that's just two times the 0 0.029 there, and that is 0 0.059, um, so four meters cubed per kilograms, great. E, calculate the pressure of the air at state two. Okay, so P2. Uh, two ways we can go about this. We can do P2, V2 equals MRT2. Note that we have everything. We have the um, specific volume, which is gonna take up these two guys. We have the R constant, we have the temperature, 720, so we can do that. But because this side here is, oops, because this side here is constant, we can also do, and it's constant because it's an isotherm, we can also do P2, V2 equals um, P1, V1. Okay, and because again there's no mass leaving the system, it's a closed container, closed system. Then this is also the same as P2 specific volume two, P1 specific volume one. Okay, so if we want to find the pressure, we can just do okay. So pressure in state two, that will simply be pressure in state one times the ratio between the volumes. And we happen to know this ratio, right? Because we know this ratio is um, we know that V2 is just two times V1. So this is V2 is two times V1. Is that correct? Yes, so it's going to be half of the initial pressure. Initial pressure is 7,000, so this is half of 7,000, 3,500. Cool. Moving on. Um, calculate V3, P3, V4, V4, P4. Put these answers on, into the table below. So where's the table below? Okay, here's the table below. So we want to pretty much just fill in all the blanks. We know these guys already, 720, 720, 300, 300. We found these guys already, so 0. Point 02952, 0, 0295 because of lack of space. Um, 0 0.059, 5904, so lack of space again. Four. And we're missing the other, we know this one already. So this is 7000, this is 3500. Okay, so we're just missing P3, P3, P4, P4. Okay, so note that from 2 to 3, we have a nice entropic transformation. We also know that the gas is ideal and CP is considered constant. So because of that, and only because of that, okay, remember that all these three, all these conditions need to be met, we can relate pressures and volumes using this equation, right? So the ratio between the temperatures equals the ratio between the pressures to the K. Remember that the K is just the um, ratio between CP and CV. And for air, it's 1.4. Uh, and then that's also relatable to the ratio between the volumes. So note that we have information to be able to solve this for, because we have isentropic from two to three like I said here, and also from 4 to 1. So we can write like so, right? Temperature 3 over temperature 2 has to be this ratio here. We know this, these information. We know temperature 3 to be 300. We know temperature 2 to be 720. And it has to, oops, and that has to be equal to the ratio between the two volumes. And then this is 1.4 minus 1, so 4. So I take the so V3, will just be, V3 will just be V2, times the root, 0.4 root of the ratio there, so 300, 720. We know all these values, we know V2, we know the temperature, so this turns out to be, what did I find for this? <clears throat> 0 0.52603, and it keeps going, so let's just approximate that to 0.527. Okay, so that's V3, and then with uh, specific volume three, I should say, and with that, then P3 becomes trivial, right? Because again, PV equals nRT, so that means that P3 is just mRT3 divided by V3. This guy here is specific volume, so that's just gonna be RT3, specific volume three. We have all this data. 0.287, T3 is 300. And this guy is what we just found, 520, 
seven. Yep. Cool. This turns out to be 100 and approximately 163.43 kilopascals. Great. Uh, next on, so we we can do the same exact process for state four, right? So for state four, same thing. Um, we can relate because again, and this is only because this is an isentropic process, ideal gas, constant CP, and all that, right? So we can say the ratio between T four and T one has to be. Let me just put this here. Uh, has to be equal to the ratio between V one and V four to the okay minus one. Okay, so we're going to pretty much be doing the same thing. So this is equal to four, state 4 is 300, state 1 is 720, and then on the other side we're going to have v1, v4 to the 0.4. Pretty much doing the same thing as before. And then v4 turns out to be 0.263417. Keeps going, so let's approximate that again to just 0.263. It's good enough. Meters cubed. Per kilogram. Okay, and then same thing, right? As as we did here, right? from state three to four, we have an isotherm, right? So P three V four equals P four V four. Oops, P three V three V three. Because and this is because it's an isotherm, right? From three to four. So that means that my P four, which is what we're missing, will just be my P three and the ratios between V three and V four. Now we have V3 and V4, we know P3 is 163, so we're good to go and grab this value of 326.96. Cool. So now we can put down these values. So this is the one we just found, 326.96.9 for lack of space. This other one is 163.4. V3 0.527. And the last one found 0.263263. Great. Okay, so this at this point in time, what I actually did is I copy pasted the graph we created before. Okay, and I want to sh make sure that it makes sense with what we expected, right? So remember that we're starting on state one, and then as we move on to state two, we expect our actually we know now, right? We know that our temperature has to be the same on state two. Our volume needs to increase and our pressure needs to decrease. So let's make sure that happened. Say so temperature is the same. Okay, volume has Increased, yes, okay, and temperature has, sorry, pressure has decreased, good. Then, as we go from, probably want to change colors, as we go from two to three, we expect our volume to increase, pressure to decrease, and temperature to decrease. Temperature decreased, that's good. Uh, our volume has increased, yeah, by a factor of 10, so that's already tells me this is completely out of scale, it should be way down here. Um, and our pressure should have decreased, good. And then, from three to four, we expect our volume to decrease, temperature to stay the same, and our pressure to increase. Same, decrease, and increase, good. And then last but not least, we're going back from four, I should do this probably. We're going back from four, back to one. So our volume should decrease, temperature increase, and pressure increase. So temperature does increase from four to one, 300 to 720. Our volume does decrease, about a factor of 10 again, so once again, this is out of scale. And our pressure should increase, and it does. Cool, so other than knowing that my original drawing is out of scale, we did a good job at calculating states, or if we did a mistake, it's, it's gonna be a probably a minor mistake, because they're all going in the direction we would expect it to go. Okay, moving on, moving on. Moving